On a Saturday in the late spring before my rookie year of teaching began, I took a drive to Cowherd Middle School to get a look. The school was on a busy street surrounded by a small Hispanic grocery store, a couple of rundown gas stations, and a neighborhood of frame houses with broken screen doors, some with boarded up windows, nearly all in need of paint. I was told there was a crack house or two mixed in among them. The architecture of the school building was relatively modern, brick and mortar, built in 1992. An addition was put on in 1999, but it appeared to be out of place, like a single perennial in a garden of weeds. Landscape work was desperately needed. The grass wasn't growing in half the places it should have been. There was mud where a recent rain drained water to the low points, and the basketball hoops on the concrete outside court had been bent by vandals. A few signs of distress, but not as bad as I thought, and not nearly as dreary or dangerous looking as some people described it. Maybe they were talking about the students, not the building. The next week I drove by the school again in the middle of the afternoon to get a look at the students on their way out at the end of the day's worth of lessons. What I saw was not what I expected. Nearly every student was Hispanic, saw two black students, no whites, and the Spanish language blanketed the sound waves in the school parking lot in the street corner near the front entrance. Not a word of English, not one. I learned later that many students spoke English, but only when they had to, or forced to. Teachers, mostly white, stood near the exits like soldiers on patrol as students exited the building. Two teachers guarded the door, another at the corner, another near the teacher's parking lot, standing with arms folded across their bodies and emotionless expressions. If you could measure a man's anxiety level, mine was in the danger zone. Nothing in my background had prepared me for what I saw. Sure, I had been in the middle of dozens of maybe hundreds of unusual situations and had met diverse and unique people as a reporter. But in terms of a paycheck, I wasn't that reporter anymore. I was a teacher, an authority figure, a role model, a mentor. How the hell was I going to do this? How could I possibly relate to this world, these students, their lives? My high school back in the early 1970s had just three African-American students, not a single Hispanic, and over a thousand whites. I had no frame of reference for what was before me. Sure, I had covered race issues as a reporter, but that's far from facing the crude realities of it. It became strikingly clear I was culturally unaware, maybe even naive, of the deep cuts race and poverty could make in a community, a life. I didn't stay long and talk to no one. I felt out of sorts. A white guy driving around the school in this neighborhood looked suspicious, like a stalker. I knew the goal of the graduate class, the graduate program, was to be assigned to a troubled school, but I never thought about what that really meant. I now realized how critically unprepared I was and how what I assumed was worldliness gained through covering the news, crime, fires, and corruption was nothing more than a chronicle of racial concerns and ignorant observation. On the way home, I stopped at Walmart and bought a pocket-sized Spanish-English dictionary.